Hello, I'm Paul Turner, and I want to teach you about the iGEM RFC 10 assembly method. No, no, don't run away. It's more interesting than it sounds. OK, maybe not that much more interesting, but it is really useful. RFC 10 is a standardized assembly method for biobrick insertions. Effectively, it is a set of rules you must follow to ensure that your biobrick can be inserted using a standard procedure. It is the most common assembly standard within iGEM and has some advantages and disadvantages. Because nearly every biobrick is RFC 10 compatible, it has the largest library of parts on the registry. Additionally, it also means it is well tested and characterized, hence its behavior is well known. Most importantly, the native protein start codon can be preserved while still using ribosome binding site parts for transcription. Why does that matter? Well, native proteins are proteins that are correctly folded. That's kind of handy when you're trying to use them. Main drawback to RFC 10, however, is the inclusion of stop codons in the assembly procedure itself. This means it cannot be used to create operons. Think of a computer program for the cell written in DNA. A different method, such as Gibson assembly or Golden Gate, must be used. Additionally, the eight base pair scar it creates causes a codon shift. So the bases in your sequence no longer code for the same amino acids unless you insert an extra base to realign the sequence. So what are the requirements? Well, RFC 10 is pretty simple. The main requirement is that you ensure that five specific restriction sites are not present in your biobrick, instead only appearing in the prefix and suffix codes around the part you wish to include. These sites are echo R1, XBA1, SPE1, PST1, and NOT1. This is because these sites are digested away to form the sticky ends for insertion into a plasmid. The most important sites are XBA1 and SPE1. These sites hybridize to one another between the insert and plasmid, forming a SCAR site with embedded stop code on TAC, TAG, AG. Now let's get specific. We know we want to avoid using certain sites in our gene insert, but what else must we do? RFC 10 lays out defined prefix and suffix sequences between which you place your part. Note that the prefix changes depending on what you are doing. For submitting a new protein as an individual biobrick to the registry, we use a specialized prefix, and the start and stop codons must be ATG and TAA, TAA respectively. If you just want to ligate an insert, you can use the normal prefix and then include a promoter and ribosome binding site before the start codon for the protein. Finally, one must consider the plasmid being used. Easiest to use are any of the PSB series, but custom plasmids are fine, provided they carry resistance for either ampicillin, chloramphenicol, canamycin, or tetracycline, although it can code for both ampicillin and one other of these. It must also have the sequencing primers, VFZ and VRA, for ease of inclusion in the registry, and preferably be one from a K12 BSL1 strain. That's RFC 10 in a nutshell, but let's look at some examples to really make it clear in our minds. We'll look at a basic insertion of a reporter protein, GFP. GFP is one of the most commonly used reporters in synthetic biology, so we'll look at how we insert it to be expressed, but in an RFC 10 compatible manner. Firstly, we need to check our sequence for those restriction sites, so let's get up close and personal to the gene. Remember, if echo R1, XBA1, SPE1, PST1, or NOT1 are present, we can't make the part using RFC 10. Unsurprisingly, GFP doesn't contain any of these sites, so we're go for insertion. Now we need to apply the correct prefix and suffix to make it into a biobrick for the registry. We want to express the GFP, so we need to use the protein expression prefix. Starting from the 5' prime end, we will start with echo R1, then NOT1. Then we add a spacer with thymine, followed by XBA1, and finally a single guanine. Now we insert our part with promoter, RBS, and protein sequence. And now the suffix sequence, thymine, SPE1, adenosine, NOT1, PST1, and then the 3' prime end. There's our sequence, which can be made to order online. For insertion, we'll just need an appropriate plasmid and our host strain. To see how to do this, click the annotation. Assuming you've transformed your biobrick into the expression culture, you should now have some glowing bacteria. Wasn't that easy? Not to mention your biobrick can easily be stored, replicated, and sent out to other iGEM teams for use. Hopefully, you now better understand what RFC 10 is, why it's used, and how to design your biobricks to work with it. You've worked through some real examples and seen the uses and limitations of RFC 10 assembly. Finally, don't forget to look in the description for more information and links, and check out our other protocol videos. I've been Paul for the Leeds iGEM 2013.